Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Guys Who Stare at Stats. I'm Cade Kennedy alongside Andrew Santangelo. And Andrew, it is the big day. It is baseball Christmas for some teams. It is coal under the stocking for others, I guess I should say. It is the MLB trade deadline. Gifts dropped already, especially if you're a San Diego Padres fan today. Great day for baseball, as always. I know we talked about it on the show last week, one of the best times of the year. And as always, getting into the show to get everything started. Before we get into the trades and recapping everything, this is going to be mainly a baseball-only episode today. Andrew, the question we always start with, how are you doing today? Wonderful. I mean, everyone knows by now how big of a baseball fan I am, so today is one of the greatest days, if not the greatest day of the season, uh, especially the regular season here, and especially with what happened today, one of the best trade deadlines in a long time. A lot of different things happening from today, from a couple of days before. I mean, you name it. There's, I mean, almost every team was involved in some way, whether it was good or bad. We can get into that later on who our winners and, and uh, losers are of the trade deadline. I was disappointed in some teams uh, in terms of just value of where I like in the sport. So, you know, it's fun overall today. <laughs> This uh, trade deadline always brings a smile to my face and uh, brings brings a great day here. It absolutely is a great day. Getting right into the trade tracker that ESPN has provided, we, we've got to start with the big one, the San Diego Padres trading for Juan Soto. Absolutely massive trade that happened earlier today. The price for the Padres, of course, Jeff Passan reporting far from cheap. Mackenzie Gore, Robert Hassel III, C.J. Abrams, James Wood, and Luke Voigt uh, being the trade package. Now, Eric Hosmer was originally in this trade package as well, but he has that no-trade clause, so he is getting sent to Boston instead with that trade. But obviously, this was the big prize, so to speak, that everybody was going after. So, Andrew, what are your thoughts about this trade? Yeah, I thought it was a great deal for both teams. Obviously, Juan Soto made it known he didn't want to be there when he declined $440 million. So Washington had to go out and get somebody. They went out and get some, got some pretty good prospects uh, in the return, and they get a uh, MLB-ready guy now in Mackenzie Gore, and they bring in Luke Voigt. So a lot of good MLB uh, playing there, obviously in a down year here for Washington. Josh Bell being added, what an addition there for San Diego. And we talk – about the rich getting richer. You're already adding Soto in this deal to a Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis team. Tatis hasn't even played in San Diego. He's playing this well. Now you're going to add Josh Bell, one of the best power hitters in the game, and then another guy who's in over 300 with a lot of power. Uh, so, no, a very good day there for San Diego fans. Um, I'll, I'll wait till later to get into it uh, with the Cardinals, with, with the deal that happened late <laughs> to, to go into that situation. But, no. Um, I, I yeah, I'll, I'll hold off on that. But no, San Diego got a lot of, or sorry, Washington got a lot of good return here. I really like Gore. Uh, Hassel's gonna be a good player. C.J. Abrams, I think, is a really good prospect there. So they got what they could here. It was tough, obviously, with Soto wanting out. It did hurt his trade value a little bit, obviously, because Washington had everything to lose in that sense. Because with him wanting out, it wasn't like you could play that card of oh, he's still going to be under control in arbitration because he wanted out. So you really didn't have that standpoint from Washington. So they did well. They got what they could here. They, they absolutely did. And I'm just excited to see the lineup the Padres roll out because, I mean, you're going to have Tatis Jr., you're going to have Juan Soto, you're going to have Machado. This is going to be an insane hitting lineup. This is the best shot the Padres are going to have to take down the Dodgers. If you want to beat them, you got to have all the firepower you have. You've got to – Build your own super team to fight the super team, I guess. And that's exactly what San Diego's doing here. No, without question. And they're a team that's always been active, whether it's the offseason or the deadline. You saw them bring in Sean Monet. You saw them bring in Blake Snell a few years ago. You saw them bring in Joe Musgrove. You saw them bring in Juan Soto. You saw them bring in Machado. I mean, they, they whether it's a trade or a free agent acquisition, Padres have, have loved to be, be active here the last few years. So uh, it's exciting to see. It was nothing short of different there for them. They also, they also bring in, um, this is a non-MLB, uh, or non-trade deadline day trade. This happened yesterday, but they bring in arguably the best closer in baseball, and Josh Hader, uh, on Monday evening before this uh, trade deadline day. So they, they add in their bullpen. So, no, overall, fantastic job by San Diego. And it, it's just, it's incredible, because for how much they make trades, I don't know how they still have prospects filing. It's not like they've been <laughs> bad enough to be a top five, t or be a, a top five pick in the draft. Like, 
That's what I'm wondering. Like, where are they pulling all these prospects from? But somehow they keep getting them, and they're able to make these deals. And it's no, it's crazy and good for them. And obviously, I think we all kind of want to see somebody challenge the Dodgers and soon enough overthrow them for that division. Might be a little late there for for, for now this year, but they're going to bring a lot of these guys back next year. So it'll be fun, uh, especially next year, too. It absolutely will be. I'll just go ahead and get into it. I had a few other trades to talk about first, but we can talk about Josh Hader going to the Padres as well. Interesting to see the Brewers do this a bit because when you're in contention for the division, you usually don't think about trading one of your closers or the guy who kind of resembles your closer most of the time. But the Brewers have always done this, I feel like. this. They, they like to stay ahead of the game. You have to when you're in the NL Central. It's a division that you feel you should win. It's either you or St. Louis this year especially. So I don't think it's the worst move. It's certainly a weird move. It took me by surprise when I saw, like, really? I guess they're doing that now. I mean, I understand it, but it's still odd to see. No, yeah, without question. And you look at Josh Hader, and his ERA is skewed right now, 4.24. He ran a couple rough outings. That's what kind of stinks about relievers. You don't have the benefit of the innings pitched like starters do. But if you have a one bad outing or so, you know you're not your area's not going to be too affected by it. Well, relievers, you know, you figure they're only throwing one, maybe two, two innings a night. So they have one blow up game, and it turns into this. I mean, you, you can see the article here. If you look yeah. at it before the All Star break, he had a uh, below under two ERA, and then all of a sudden, just in what ten games after the All Star break, it's already up to four two four because of uh, one bad outing. One really, really bad outing, and then I think he had one shaky outing as well. So, no, just – I, I didn't understand this trade from a Brewer standpoint. I, to me, if you're contending like that, you're first. You have a chance to go on and win the World Series with that pitching staff and Corbin Burns, et cetera, there, and then you had Josh Hader to close things out. Th- this trade makes zero sense. I get Tyler – Taylor Rogers has some experience, so you, get, you, you stay in there, get some closing roles there. And you get some prospects back, but to me, this this screams there's something wrong with Hader in the locker room. We we knew we had problems in, in the past uh, with the Brewers a few years ago, and it seemed like those were past us. But maybe he wants out of Milwaukee. Like to me, there's something else behind doors that we don't know about because this trade is just too odd for a, a team currently in first place in their division. And Andrew, I think you're right there with that. There feels like there probably is something off here because, like I said, you don't just trade your closer. You know, just because you need to trade. You don't just trade a guy like that who has all the skill, had a sub-2 ERA right before the All-Star break. You have one or two bad games, and that's, oh, you're gone. Something has to be up there. I don't know what it is, but as we'll see with what the Brewers have been able to do, they're still going to be contending in the NL Central. Nothing's going to change there. No. But looking at your Phillies, going to talk about them, kind of one of the other big trades sneaking in just – a few minutes before the deadline ended, on top of a few other trades, Noah Syndergaard going to the Phillies, and you got Thor. So, congratulations on that, Andrew. The National League wild card race continues to heat up, as if it already couldn't be tighter than it is, with the Phillies and Cardinals battling for that final wild card spot, and everyone around them. Phillies are making moves; they're trying to get into that wild card spot. And I know we talked about this with. That extra third spot this year, something is going to happen. Teams are going to stay active, and we're seeing it now. No, without question. And, and as a Phillies fan, I abs- absolutely love this. I have no complaints anywhere around. Y- you filled every need possible. One of the biggest complaints all year is Phillies don't have enough bullpen. Well, you, you sure you, you add you added the back end of the bullpen here with a guy who's throwing fantastic this year, having a career year under two ERA. You mix that with a, with uh, Sir Anthony Dominguez and Brad Hand. Just a tremendous job there. You had Brandon Marsh, big question mark at center field for the, the Phillies so far as they platoon to Dubal Herrera, Mickey Moniak, Matt Verling. I mean, I can keep going. We've had over five guys, so I'll stop. But you, you ensure that there with some defense. And listen, I, I, everyone's complaining because the offensive numbers aren't there. But Phillies, people forget these don't count as trade deadline acquisitions, but they're getting two of their best hitters back. They've been playing the last – month or so without their two best hitters and Gene Segura and Bryce Harper, so basically trade deadline acquisitions. So the offense is already getting better. So this is a, a pure defensive move the Phillies needed badly. So I love the addition of Marsh. Um, and then Noah Syndergaard, again, you need a starting pitcher. One of your starting pitchers goes down. He's out to at least September. And everyone's always said he'd be a pretty good back-end bullpen piece, one or two innings there. 
uh, as a former starter and his stuff. So now you can maybe move him back to the bullpen once he comes back. And I mean, I get no, no, I mean, don't get me wrong, no Syndergaard is not prime Syndergaard from when the Mets won the World Series, but he's better than what the Phillies are dealing with right now. He comes in and he's probably the three starter in the rotation. So no, Dave Dombrowski came in and did everything I could hope for. I mean, you give up a couple prospects, but listen, prospects are prospects at this point. You, you look here, and this is why I always say it, Mickey Moniak, I, I hope he goes on and does well. I mean, I got nothing against him. But he was number one pick in 2016. Like, and he hasn't done anything so far. And I get it. He, he skipped college. He came straight out of high school. He's still young. But, like, at some point, like, he was a, he was number one pick, and I think he was the he was a top ten prospect in all of baseball at one point, and, and he just didn't pan out. So, like, prospects are prospects. Because that, that's – as a Phillies fan, I can tell you this, one of the biggest knocks against Marsh right now is because we traded uh, Logan Ohopi, and he's our like th- he's our, he was the third best prospect in the system, eighty six overall in baseball. But again, you're trying to win now, like you're not, and you have J and he's a catcher, so you have JT here locked in. So like the trade makes sense from from Philly standpoint. Can you argue it was a little bit much, maybe? But again, you're trying to win now. Prospects are prospects, and we we talked about that yeah. last week. Yeah, you, you take that risk when you're trying to win now. You're not going to worry about the future. You're trying to worry about yeah. right now. If the Dodgers were trying to worry about the future and right now, they're not going to be as good as they were. Same thing with the Yankees, same thing with the Astros. That's the sacrifice you have to make. Yeah, abso- that's in every sport. Absolutely. And look at the Padres. They, they must have all these top-ranked prospects every year to be getting these guys still. How many, how many trades are we looking back on going? Man, Padres really lost on that on that prospect. Padres really lost on that on that prospect. Like we aren't like it's, and there's a reason for it. There absolutely is. Moving on to the Red Sox, they get Tommy Pham from the Reds and send Jake Dykeman to the White Sox for Reese McGuire. So the Red Sox making moves as well. That whole AL East is just stacked together. Everyone trying to separate the Red Sox being last in the ALA, something I did not think I would be saying this year. But here we are. So they go out and get Tommy Fame from the Reds, make a few moves, and I, I, I always love this. Trading Tommy Fame for a player to be named later or cash considerate. We don't know yet. We're trading him for some guy. We we got no idea. Maybe it'll I know it's happened before where you trade for a player to be named later and that ends up being that player you traded for. I know that's happened a few times in the MLB. Fan favorite cash considerations always showing up. You know, sometimes the real MVP of the team. Always fun things like that. Yeah, no, without question. I I was confused by the Red Sox. They go out and make a trade uh, for Tommy Pham, and it makes it seem like they're going to be active. And then all of a sudden they trade the starting catcher and Christian Vasquez, Vasquez, a great locker room presence guy too, so – Boston didn't make much sense. They went back and forth, it seemed like, between selling and buying. So I don't really think they got better or worse. But they, they should have picked one or the other, in my opinion. They had some guys there that won't be back next year, most likely, because they don't want to go over the luxury tax. So you had an opportunity to get some prospects back for them. They decide not to. So it's going to be an interesting case. But, no, yeah, it's just a very weird deal here. Uh, White Sox get a decent reliever in Jake Diekman. Uh, left-hander can throw the ball pretty hard. So we'll see as Chicago tries to make a, a run at the wild card. But, Chicago team that stayed a little quiet was a little surprising, but uh, this was an interesting move. But again, I was confused by Boston this year. I I am too. This is a weird Boston team. I know we've talked about it. I really don't know what to do with them because they're they're perfectly five hundred. You don't know which Red Sox team you're going to get on any given night. You know, are you going to get the team that gets absolutely dismantled by the Blue Jays, or are you going to get a team that can beat the Yankees? The inconsistency of the Red Sox knows no bounds this year. Yeah, to me, this they're done. Like they, this is the yeah. end. They're not going to make the playoffs or anything. I would and think we'll so. See. We'll see where they go in the off season. And uh, moving on to the next trade, more of a. I saw a lot of sad Orioles fans when this happened. They know it had to happen. But Trey Mancini getting traded to the Houston Astros. Astros making a, a few moves. Also getting Vasquez from the Red Sox. Houston just doing what they need to do, getting a few bats here and there, just filling in some gaps as they try to make another championship run. Yeah, Houston's another team. Had a great, fantastic trade deadline. They bring in Vasquez. They bring in Mancini. Uh, so they did everything they could hope for there uh, in Houston fans. Yeah, no, I, I feel bad for Baltimore. They finally started clicking. They started gelling as a team. These guys were on the upswing, and you see them trade – uh, a guy like Trey Mancini, who, who's overcome cancer, he's really built the locker room up, and uh, it, it was a sad day. I don't think it had to be done, if I'm being honest. I, I think 
he'd be willing to go back at this point. You got to the point you were at. You're finally starting to win some games. Are you going to make the playoffs? I'm going to lean probably not, but you're still under contention. And, and there's still an opportunity here to, to be made. And you trade him and um, – Lopez, your closer, and he had some he had interesting th- things to say today on that deal, which made things kind of put it in perspective for myself there. In which I, it's a side you never really think about there, and especially with the the way it happened. As I try to bring up his his exact quote here in just uh, one second. Yeah, but looking here, uh, the general manager James Click saying our focus obviously is trying to put together or put ourselves in the best position that we think we can to compete for a World Series this year, and those are two guys we think can help get us there. So the the Astros, to the surprise of absolutely no one, are all in on trying to win another World Series. Oh, yeah, no, without question. And James is absolutely correct there. I mean, these do put you in a better position to win win a World Series, and they absolutely absolutely will. I mean, Mancini is a great player. Vasquez is a great locker room guy, and Astros, one of the weaknesses was catcher, and now they upgrade there. So, no, yeah, absolutely great day. For Houston, Lopez's quote here, talking to the Twins media when he got traded to Minnesota, it bec- it became a family. It's a family. It's a lot of tears because we worked so hard to get to this point, but not afraid to get this chapter started. End quote. I mean, it, it says it right there. When, when you're struggling like that, you have that young team, and you've been there for a few years, you're trying to build it up, and you finally click. I just imagine that. You finally start clicking. It's like, okay, this is fun. You call up your highly uh, talented prospect. He's... He took a, a few. He took a week or two to get going, but now he's really panning out. And it's just it's it started to feel like it's everything they hoped that process would be. And then all of a sudden, in the snap of the finger, you're, you're trading two guys that helped build that locker room. So I, I can't even imagine being in that situation. I can't either. I really don't know what's. <laughs> I really, I just can't believe it. The Orioles finally getting good, and like you said, do you tr- keep with the plan or do you change it now yeah. that you're winning? It's it's a difficult decision to make. But a lot of Orioles fans have succumbed to their fate that we got to stay the course here. This is a bit unexpected to be this kind of jump this year, but you got to stay the course is what they're thinking. Moving on to the Yankees, they needed to trade Joey Gallo. Most Yankees fans will tell you you're not going to take a guy bat- or a guy batting 159. That's not going to cut it for the Yankees this year, even though he does have 25 home runs. 194 strikeouts, that's a bit, a bit yikes, I guess you could say is the best word for it. But the Dodgers going to take a chance on Gallo as he gets traded from the Yankees to the Dodgers. So getting to go from one contender to another, basically. Yeah, this is an interesting trade. I don't know. I feel like the Dodgers were trying to add bench piece here. I, I, don't, they I don't like the fit, if I'm being honest. Yeah, he's not a bad defender, but he's been struggling this year. To me, he's a lesser version of Cody Bellinger, so you already got that in your lineup. I mean, who am I to say here? I mean, obviously, the Dodgers are the best team. But, like, to me, it's just not a log jam for L.A. I feel good for Joey Gallo. He had to get out of New York, and hopefully he can refine himself in L.A. But this, I just don't think – I don't think he's going to get enough playing time to refine himself in L.A. So it's going to be interesting to see where he goes about from here and how, how it's going to happen. But I, I thought the return there for the Yankees and getting beater was pretty good, though. I think so, too. It, the Dodgers, like we just talked about, getting a depth piece, that's pretty much all they need at this point. You look at the Dodgers last year, they had Albert Pujols who would step in at any time if they needed a bat. Get, you know, Joey Gallo out there, hope for a home run, get something going. You know, if you ever need any energy, you can always go to your bench. And that's something that I think is not talked about as much in baseball yeah. is the bench, just like any other sport. The bench is still extremely valuable in baseball. Oh, yeah, without question, but you can know you can thank for that is Rob Manfred. Yeah. I mean, we adding the DH and the NL, mm-hmm. the bench has become a little less useful. I mean, you think about it, and the NL used to have ninth. I mean, you get to the seventh inning, you're pitching in for the pitcher. You don't have that anymore. It's another aspect you lost in the game there, and uh, now you really only see it. Pitch runner maybe in the ninth inning, maybe a defensive replacement in the ninth inning. That, I mean, that's that's what you get nowadays. So I miss those days of, okay, you got to have the strategize there, and but that's what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. But moving on to the final main story I had put up here until we get the after trade deadline trades that get reported. And we got a couple. We'll, we will we will get into that in a moment. But uh, the Cardinals acquiring Jose Quintana from the Pittsburgh Pirates. This was the Cardinals' big move, I guess you could say. It looked like of the deadline, hoping for Juan Soto. Cardinals not getting him, obviously. 
But the Cardinals did the one thing they needed to do that everyone agreed they had to do. They got a starting pitcher. You know, not the greatest guy in the world, but you got another solid pitcher to come in and hopefully get some innings in, just keep eating away at it, try to get your starters and bullpen everything in order if you want to make a run here. So, it's, as a Cardinals fan, I guess I can say, not the greatest thing in the world, but at least it's not nothing. Yeah, no, I don't know. I'd be disappointed if I'm a Cardinals fan. I mean, this trade itself isn't bad. Quintana's a good pitcher. He, he's having a better year this year. He's been up and down in his career, and, and I think it'll go a long way for him. And uh, I just think like th- this was a win for him, obviously. But I, I think what proceeded late in the day today – which we'll get into here in a little bit, so I'll save that for later. It is why the Cardinals have taken taken a hit in my mind in this trade deadline, but they, they could have had a, a lot better deadline. We should be sitting here praising the Cardinals instead. We uh, Instead, I'm disappointed. I'm not even a Cardinals fan. Yeah, well, I expect this, so I guess I'm not. When you expect them to do things like this, it's not the worst thing in the world, but looking at the complete trade deadline tracker, we can kind of go through – if there's any, Andrew, that 100% stick out to you, obviously looking at some of these here, like Witten Merrifield being traded from the Royals to the Blue Jays. Raziel Iglesias has been traded from the Angels to the Braves, so that's another Angels trade. It seems like the uh, sale is on for the Angels, everyone except Trout and Otani basically going to get dealt, it feels. And then the one we were just talking about, the Yankees trading Jordan Montgomery to the Cardinals for Harrison Bader. That is, this is one for Cardinals fans that was a bit tough to swallow. Bader's been a fan favorite for a long time. Great defensive outfielder, but with his plantar fasciitis, I mean, it. I guess the Cardinals front, agent, uh, front office thinks it's a lot worse than we all do. So why not deal them and try to get some pitching instead? Yeah, I'll start in order. Uh, you went in, Iglesias. Um, huge. I went out of order on you, but. Well, you went. Oh, I guess you went Merrifield then. Middle up, down. <laughs> um, I already forgot. I just figured you went in order. Um, no, nah, Iglesias, big big get for the Braves. They needed another piece, especially after trading Will Smith to, to sure up that bullpen uh, as they got Jake Odorizzi for the starting rotation. This gives them some bull pe- bullpen piece after trading Will Smith. So, a good move here for Atlanta. Angels had to take what they can get at this point. Um, but, no, yeah, a, a plus move for the Atlanta. Going to Whit Merrifield, this was a little shocking to me. They've been – Kansas City hasn't wanted to trade him in the past uh, past few years, and, and Toronto is a team that's known for kind of not making a big, big move. But they finally both made that splash. I mean, Merrifield wasn't going to go on, get any better at this point in his career. It was a tough Kansas City team once again. So this was a good move for both teams. Now here's here's where – the Cardinals come in. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm not even a Cardinals fan. Yeah. So this is coming from a neutral voice. Yes. You're telling me you wouldn't trade Bader or Carlson for Juan Soto, but you're going to go let them go for, or one of them go for Jordan Montgomery. Like, th- this just makes, like, Juan Soto is a generational, talented piece. And the only thing holding back that deal was Dylan, Dylan Carlson. And I got nothing against Dylan Carlson. But Juan Soto's 23. Carlson's 23. You would have had a couple prospects, obviously. So basically what you're saying is Dylan Carlson's as good as Juan Soto, if not better, well, by keeping yeah. it. And you, you were so stingy on not trading one, on those young guys that have had MLB experience in the Gorman, in the Bader, in, in the Carlson, and you give a Bader for Montgomery? You didn't even need Montgomery at this point. Like, you're, you you got Quintana. Like, Montgomery is basically Jose Quintana 2.0. Like that, that was, to me, that was a lot for Montgomery, and, and I get it. You already mentioned the, the injury history of Bader, but I, I mean, still, like, I don't know. I, I'm not a Cardinals fan, so you can correct if I'm wrong. Anyone in the chat who's a Cardinals fan, can correct me if I'm wrong. But to me, I, I would be fuming right now if I was a St. Louis fan that I had an opportunity to get a generational talented piece. And it was Carlson in the way, and then you give up Bader for Montgomery. That that's just contradicting itself in my eyes. To me, it's it's not the. I agree, it's bad. I will agree with you. I don't like it. I know Bader's been injured, and that it seems he keeps getting injured more and more. But at the same time, he's nice to have out there for defense. Yes, that's his whole point, pretty much. But 
I'm not surprised, I guess I should say, because I'm used to the Cardinals doing this. Outside of the Goldschmidt Aaron Auto trades, which were obviously successful, every single year this happens. Those were two exceptions that just so coincidentally happened to be back-to-back. Every year, the Cardinals get linked to someone big, and it never happens. This is just the St. Louis thing. It happens with the Blues, too, if you ever notice. They'll always be in the running for a guy and then finish second. They never make the final piece. And it, ever since 2011, when we traded a bunch for some pitchers and it just happened to work out that year and the stars aligned, every year we think, oh, well, we need to go find this old pitcher and maybe he'll be revived somehow. We've done this so many times. And the worst part is it never happens. It yeah. has not happened once. I do not understand why we keep thinking it's going to work, and it never does. Yeah, I mean, last year you saw you, you trade for a very old John Lester and a very old Jay Happ at the end of their mm-hmm. careers instead of going out and getting real talent when you had a shot to win the World Series. So, no, I get that's what the Cardinals do a lot, but, again, I'm just saying I, I'd I'm be— I'm disappointed, ext- too. I, I'd be fuming right now if I was yeah. a St. Louis fan. I, I guess I'm I'm not fuming because I expect it. When, when you get in the cycle of it, you're just like, oh, I can't wait for us to make a trade for trade's sake. See, and it, it improved nothing. It, even when I, I do expect it, I still <laughs> I still get mad. So I don't know. I guess because I've done it long enough, I've lived through this cycle before. Looking at some of these other ones to recap here, the Mariners announcing they have gotten Jake Lamb from the Dodgers for a player to be named later or cash considerations. The Twins have acquired Michael Fulmer from the Tigers. The Mets have acquired uh, Darren Roof from the Giants in exchange for J.D. Davis and three pitching prospects. Looking at some of these here, Brandon Drury getting dealt to the Padres from the Reds. Like I said, the Reds trading around quite a bit today. Twins finalizing a deal to acquire Tyler Mal from the Reds for multiple prospects. So quite a few trades here, just boom, 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 as we always expect with the deadline. Yeah, the Jake Lamb trade, I, I don't take much of that. I think, again, more depth. Um, for the more depth this time uh, for the Mariners. I, I'm not a huge Jake Lamb guy. I hope he proves me wrong and can help Seattle break that playoff drought. Um, Darren Ruff, a, a guy that's been around the league for a while again. Not really, doesn't really make much sense from the Mets standpoint. I, I was a little confused by it, and, and I, I don't know. I like Ruff. He used to play for the Phillies. He has potential and stuff. He he's a journeyman. He struggled. Or he had a really good rookie year. Struggled. Played over in, I think it was career for a little bit, and then came back with the Giants. So this was kind of a, a surprising move from both sides. I just don't think it fits the Mets well there I mean, with, with Alonzo, and they already got a crowded outfield. Um, so that was a, a smaller deal. This one, an underrated deal. Brandon Drury is a fantastic player this year. Uh, cheaper guy so far with the Reds. So, uh, again, another fantastic move for San Diego just to win. And then the Twins. They 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 had underrated trade trade deadline. I I don't I think it's maybe because it's Minnesota, but the, you don't hear much about what they did today. They go out and get a guy like Tyler Mamali. I think he's underrated. He was in a tough spot in Cincinnati. I really like this deal from Minnesota. I think he's going to do big things for them. And then again, we already talked about the Lopez deal. A very good closer, a, a guy that can go a rare two inning type closer there. They got from Baltimore. So Minnesota had a, had a sneaky trade deadline here. They did. I mean, you see him. Just And that's kind of how the Twins always yeah. are. You don't really notice what they do, and then they make the, oh, hey, you know, the Twins did a thing. Oh, wow. But that that's kind of how the whole AL Central is going to be this year. I mean, you see no, exactly. the Guardians, the White Sox, the Twins, no one really seems to care about any of them, getting overshadowed by it, literally every team <laughs> currently. But that's just life in the AL Central so far this year. But looking at some of these other trades, obviously already talking about some of these – Looking, see, it, and now it's kind of hard going back on this because now we've gotten through most <laughs> of the major ones. So if we stop on one, there we go. The Blue Jays finalizing a deal with the Marlins. Shortstop Jordan Groshans going to Miami and Zach Pop among players going to Toronto. And then Orioles, Twins, there we go again with the Twins. Twins getting George Lopez, literally George Lopez. I hope it's not George Lopez because I'm going to have some fun with that. <laughs> But uh, Mr. Lopez from the Orioles going to the Twins, Cade Povich, Yanir Cano, and more prospects going to the Orioles. The Braves have acquired right-hander Jake Ordizzi, or uh, Odorizzi Odorizzi. from the Astros for Will Smith. So I'm going to tell you right now, I know we've talked about me being – I have no idea who any of these people are. I, I'm good for them. 
this is where me not knowing baseball enough comes in because I don't know any of these people. I'm just hoping they have a funny last name. That is where I'm at, Andrew. Well, you're welcome. Here, here I come. Um, okay. Please explain. Probably, baseball to, give too, to, probably to give too much, but uh, <laughs> no, Zach Pop. Uh, he's a guy that's been in my division for a little bit, so I've kind of watched him. He's a good late inning reliever. I don't think he's going to be a, a closer type role for Toronto. I think he'll be able to eat innings late in the game and give them an opportunity. I, I like his potential there in Toronto. A good deal for Miami. I mean, a, a late inning reliever like that, you're going to just get what you can get for him. Um, so yeah, a, a solid move. Like I said, Lopez. I, I love this pickup from Minnesota. A contender here. Again, I, I didn't like Baltimore trading him away because I don't think he's that old. So that, that he's a guy they could have continued to, to keep, but he's yeah because he's also got control. So he, he would have been under contract for a little bit, and that's one of the things. That's why Minnesota had to end up giving up a little bit extra here in this deal, just because he's under control. Uh, Jacob Arizzi, a kind of a rare trade here. You don't really see a, a straight up one MLB guy for an MLB guy. Um, in terms of that, so I kind of like to see that every once in a while. You have Jake Odorizzi, who's been a, a solid starting pitcher in his career for a reliever and Will Smith, um, who uh, a left-handed reliever. It was a huge part of that Atlanta World Series team last year. So I was a little taken back and shocked to see them trade him. I know he struggled a little bit lately, but when everything he did last year, you saw the postseason success from him. That's why I was surprised to see it. So that that was that was a surprising move in terms of giving up Will Smith. Jake Odorizzi was on the market for a while from Houston, and Atlanta needed starting help with the, the struggles from uh, their young young guy and Ian Anderson, who showed promise in past years. So, a little surprising move here, but I, I like it for both teams. Astros needed bullpen help on the left handed side, and then uh, Matt Bush uh, after Trey and Hater. I mean, it says it right there. Matt Bush is a guy he can go out and and throw pretty pretty fast. Gets close to hundred, if not tops out around a hundred. And that's something, I mean, Milwaukee's going to hope he can come in and just take that closer role and not lose much. Is he better than Josh Hader? Absolutely not. Is he going to maybe be able to hold the fort down? He probably could do that. He, he's a guy, he'll give up base runners, but he finds a way out of it a lot of times. So we'll, we'll see what he's able to do in a high uh, contention situation. All right, let's see. So we continue slowly moving down the list here. The Yankees getting uh, another right hand start with Frankie Montes and close up Lou Trevino in a trade with the A's. We talked about the Hayter and Mancini trades. And Scott F. Ross also going to the Yankees from the Cubs in exchange for minor leaguer right hander Hayden Wisniewski. So just a few more to add to the list here. Yankees trying to get some pieces as well. You know, Yankees got better. I mean, I, they did. I, I, the rich got richer again. I already used that once. Here it is again. I mean, for them to add Frankie Montas, unbelievable. They get the closer in Lou Trevino as well. Just an un unbelievable deal. I mean, the A's, I still can't believe the amount of talent the A's have traded away in the last year. It's just unbelievable to me um, in that sense. I mean, they could have they could have did something this year, and that, that's where it's disappointing uh, there from Oakland. Josh Hader, I already touched upon that one. So it's a surprise, but... Um, no, yeah, jumping down that Yankees one again, just more depth from that. I mean, you can never have enough bullpen depth, and that's what they get. And a guy like Scott F. Ross, not gonna, not gonna be a lights out like they got on other deals, but he'll, his guy will be able to eat some innings in, in the middle relief. And as we s continue to go down here, let's see what else can we find. The Braves announcing they've acquired area Adrian, or uh, my, I almost completely butchered that <laughs> Adrianza. There we go. From the Nationals in exchange for Trey Harris. Atlanta also designated Robinson Cano for assignment. San Francisco trading uh, has traded for Cubs shortstop Dixon Machado and sent right-hander Raniel Espinal to Chicago. Look at some others. Tampa Bay acquiring veteran outfielder David Peralta in a trade with Arizona. And the Cardinals, hey, we, we did a trade. Yay, the Cardinals and Phillies. Of course, during the length of our show, we got a Cardinals-Phillies trade. Cardinals announcing they've acquired a left-handed pitcher, Jojo Romero, in exchange for Edmundo Sosa. And then the Dodgers, we talked about what they've been able to do. Same thing with the Yankees, just building up depth. They get Chris Martin from the Cubs. Yeah, so the first one's a minor, minor league deal. A couple minor league names in there. It's nothing big there from the Braves Nationals. Um, jumping down to, let's see where it really gets big. Uh, yeah, so now we're kind of getting into the, the – they happened, but – Yeah, no, the Giants-Cubs, another minor leaguer for minor leaguer, nothing too crazy. The Rays the – Ra here's a good here's a good depth move. Tampa Bay always a team that stays quiet as well. 
They get David Peralta from Arizona. That's a big addition there for depth for that Tampa Bay squad. Uh, I was excited to see. I, I thought Tampa could do a little bit more at the deadline. I say that every year, I feel like. Cardinals and, and the Phillies, they made a, a good trade here. I, I think it helps both teams. Sosa wasn't getting enough at-bats there in St. Louis. A uh, pretty good defender. That's what the Phillies needed uh, between shortstop or middle infield to center field. And there they did that today with Marsh. And then they bring in Sosa as well. So I was excited to see that. Cardinals got a guy in Jojo Romero. Uh, just a, he, He's a clubhouse favorite. He's a guy with a lot of potential. He's coming off Tommy John surgery. So it'll be interesting to see if he can get back to where he's supposed to be, at least somewhere near it, and be a good left-handed reliever for uh, St. Louis out of the pen. And then... Uh, Again, Chris Martin, not a bad pickup. Dodgers just getting some depth there from the uh, relief relief standpoint. And then Luis Castillo, I mean, the biggest starting pitcher on the market went. This would have been last Friday. He gets dealt, and uh, for the Reds, Reds get a fantastic return there uh, for him. The fact that they got Arrero and Marte in that same deal was just incredible. So good return there for Cincinnati, and that was good to see for them. And then the final trade, because then we get into Ben Attendee and Vogelbach and some of these other trades that already happened. The Mets acquiring Tyler Naquin and Phil Deal in trade with the Reds. So one final Reds trade to end it on. They were pretty active. The whole NL Central really was active, it felt like, during yeah. except for the, I mean, even the Pirates who really weren't that active, they still had two trades that they had. So the whole NL Central moving, some of the big ones, though, like Contreras not getting traded, Ian Happ not getting traded for the Cubs. People expected that. People expected Rodon to get traded from the Giants. That didn't happen as well. So a few big names not moving. People didn't know what was going to happen with them, and that always happens at the trade deadline. Some guys get moved, and some simply just don't. Yeah, no, absolutely, and you saw it. You had Carlos Rondon, Jack Peterson, Ian Happ, Wilson Contreras, a lot of good names that were supposed to be moved and didn't, and that comes down to asking price, and there's things that go in and out. Obviously, teams want players, but you need both sides to, to agree on it, and that's, I think that's sometimes what gets mixed up is, oh, how do we not trade for this guy? Well, you need two teams to agree. That's why. It's not necessarily that your team didn't go after the guy. But, um, no, a fun deadline, one of the best I can remember in years, one of the best for my favorite team, which made it even more exciting. And it puts puts a lot of teams in position to do something. Yeah, I mean, it sure does. As someone who had an eh, eh to infuriating trade day to line, uh, yay, I guess, woo baseball, that's about all I could say. But I do want to take one quick look at the MLB standings before we get out of here. We're not going to touch on – Football news a whole lot. We're going to save that for our Thursday show. We have a big show later in the day on Thursday. We get Tyler Riggs over. One of my friends is going to have a big college football preview show. That is going to be a lot of fun. But looking at the American League before we get on out of here, nothing really changing except a little bit of separation now between Toronto and Tampa Bay and a little separation between Tampa and Baltimore. But the Yankees with a 70-34 record, they're going to keep controlling the AL East. The AL Central getting exciting again. White Sox and Guardians each within three of the Twins. Guardians only a game away from Minnesota now. We get the AL West, the Astros, still a commanding 12-game lead over the Mariners, and then another eight games of separation between Seattle and Texas. Looking at the National League, the Mets have a three-and-a-half game lead over the Braves with a 65-37 and record for the Mets. Both New York teams doing well right now, something that is usually not seen a whole lot in the MLB. The Brewers have a three-game lead over the Cardinals in the battle of who's going to win the NL Central. It's it's a coin flip at this point. You never know which side. I know the Cardinals have one of the easiest remaining strength of schedules. Brewers have a lot more difficult strength of schedule. We'll see how that gets settled there. And the Dodgers and the Padres. The Padres are slowly building up. They have Juan Soto. They have another hitter to go with and another great player ready to challenge the Dodgers. But can they overcome a 12-game deficit? That's going to be really difficult to see. Yeah, no, they're, they're, I don't think they'll be able to overcome the 12 games. I mean, I think they'll get in the playoffs in a wild card spot. But listen, I mean, you look at the teams. San Diego added a lot. Dodgers added a lot. Phillies added a lot. Braves added a lot. Mets was shockingly quiet. Uh, I can say I, I was shocked to see them quiet. I, I do think Alina did make enough moves today or throughout sorry throughout the week um, to over over overtake the Mets. So it's gonna be a fun race down the stretch. 
Brewers and Cardinals, I feel like they both took a step back, if I'm being honest, which is weird to say. They have two. We both suffer. <laughs> like, it's weird to say. You have two teams fighting for a playoff spot, fighting over the division, and instead of getting better, I mean, I, I guess they got Quintana, so maybe the Cardinals got a little better. I thought the Brewers took a step back with that hater move. I think that, that hurts them a little bit. So, I don't know. Yeah, weird for the NL Central. Again, both teams there at the top and fighting for a wild card spot if they can't win the division, I felt. Took a, a step back, which was weird. Which is weird to say. Listen, we have the bucket of crabs mentality. We will always pull each other down. Yeah. We're, we have too much Midwestern hospitality. We're so nice. We're gonna let everyone else have fun, and we're just gonna sacrifice our own team for the greater good of the MLB. That's very nice. Yeah, that's that's what we do. That's why we're the best fans in baseball. We sacrifice our own team to let you be happy. Yeah. <laughs> I think the GM does that more than the fans, though. That is true. If we had it our way, we'd be like, no, trade yeah. for everyone. Become the Dodgers. Yeah. He speaks for the fans. Yes. But looking at the AL, I really want to see as we look at the wild card, we have an absolute log jam here. I really am excited to see how this works out because now the Guardians are only a game back. You have Tampa Bay and Seattle now fighting for that second spot, and Toronto's three games ahead. Eight of their last ten they've won. And the crazy thing to me is that even someone like the Rangers, they're still technically in it. They're only eight games out. Is it a lot to overcome? Yes. Can they make that up? Technically, yes. It's still just wild to me with that third wild card, how much that changes things. No, without question. I look at it. The Rangers got plus six point dif- run differential. That's just funny about it, too. Yeah, but, do. no, it, it's going to be a fun race. I mean, any of those teams can really take that last wild card spot. We've seen Seattle collapse last year. Cleveland's playing better than we all thought. Baltimore's a surprise team. So, sorry, excuse me. Um, so, I, I think there's it, a couple opportunities here. And, again, you're waiting for that White Sox run to, to come about. And then looking at the National League, the Braves continuing to dominate that first wild card spot. Padres are four and a half games back, but like I said, can they cut into that? I think they can personally and make that a run with the Braves. And then the Phillies and Cardinals and even the Giants, if you want to throw them in there all within four games of each other, battling for that, or four and a half, I should say, battling for that final wild card spot there. And you never know, maybe the Marlins, Rockies, or D-backs get hot for a little bit and make it can make it a little bit more contentious. No, absolutely. And... The fun part is the Phillies and Cardinals, there's no reason they can't catch the Padres. I mean, you're sitting yeah, two games back. of The the Phillies sent two games back. Cardinals sent three games back of the Padres. Who's to say they don't even possibly catch Atlanta? I mean, I don't. six and a half is doable, especially in the same division. You get to play them a lot. I mean, the Phillies about to start a series with Atlanta. So if you're able yeah. to take two, you make up ground, and you go from there. So it's going to be a fun race. The baseball is doing it well with the extra wild card spot, and I'm excited to watch these final two months. The other funny stat before we get out of here I want to mention, the Braves, Padres, Phillies, and Cardinals have all won six of their last ten, and then the Giants, Marlins, and Rockies have all won three of their last ten. So we've got patterns going on, a little bit of separation there. Could be a lot closer, but it simply isn't. But, hey, that's baseball. Exactly. No, and bo- all teams can do those, switch those runs. Yep. Anything can truly happen, and that will do it for our show today. Another successful trade deadline season. Another lot of crazy things going on. As always, we thank you for tuning in. It has been a wonderful show, as always. For Andrew Santangelo, I'm Cade Kennedy. If you liked what you heard tonight, be sure to give us a follow on Twitch at NWTV7. Subscribe to our YouTube channels, whether it be the NWC, uh, NWTV7 channel or the guys who stare at stats. And be sure to come back Thursday night, 7 or 7.30. You'll have to follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok to find out when exactly we go live. It is going to be a fun show, our college football preview show. That's right, folks. Football is almost here. We're under a month away officially. It is such a fun time of the year, and it's it's coming quickly, folks. Believe me, if you think about it, it'll be here. You just got to keep getting through old games, I guess, or continue watching baseball, whatever you do. But you'll want to be there for that Thursday show. It's going to be so much fun. And until next time, have a wonderful evening, everybody.